And now I'm going to show you how we can create double-sided leaves for our plants and our trees. Uh, we're going to start out by loading in uh, one of the plants, the clivia. I'll go ahead and click OK to load that in. We're going to need to zoom the camera in or move it in closer uh, to this plant since it is uh, rather small. We're just going to go ahead and position that, get it in place. And now if I double click on our plant, I open up the plant editor. And now in this case, we have a little stem in the center of this type of plant. So what I'm going to do uh, is just take our stem and reduce its diameter and length uh, all the way down to the bottom of the slider. And that way it really won't show up at all. And I'm also going to prepare this a little for the image map uh, that I'm going to be loading in and the different maps. Uh, so I'm going to increase our width and adjust our randomness and our curl a little bit. And click OK. And now I'm going to adjust our lighting of our scene uh, so we can see this a little bit better. Move it a little more towards ambient and increase the lighting gain on the sky dome and a little bit of artificial ambience uh, because we want to be able to see those undersides of the leaves as well uh, as the tops. So we're going to move over to our second material which is the leaf and I'm going to rename this custom leaf and now we are going to edit our function and we can load in uh, the image maps. I'm going to double click and we're going to select one of the leaves available uh, within the double sided leaf folder of the content directory. And what I have uh, first, these are from the leaves collection. Uh, we're going to select H plant 15 front and color. Uh, so this is going to be the front of our leaf. And you notice that it's upside down, and that is because uh, the leaves within view, um, when we're working on plants, are normally upside down uh, for the stem. Uh, so this way we can just use these already upside down and not have to rotate them. So I did modify that part of the leaves collection uh, just to modify that image. So we'll first load in the color, and now we're going to just delete our bump. And I'm going to go to transparency and load in the clip. And I'm going to add in another projected texture map. And I'm going to load in our bump for the front and connect that to our grayscale output. And now we can click OK. And under bump, I'm going to go ahead and decrease our depth to 0.1 for now. Uh, I'm going to decrease the highlight intensity and increase the shininess. And I'm going to double click to open up our plant and select our leaf to modify its hooking point. And I'll go ahead and just make this part of the stem. We can click OK. And now we can see the width is a little bit too much, so I'll go ahead and decrease that. We also increase the length a little. We just want this to match up to our image map. And we can create a couple of different variations until we get something uh, that looks a little bit better where we can see the undersides of the leaves and the tops at the same time. And if we need to, we can adjust the flexibility and pull those up a little bit higher. And maybe adjust the curl. And then I'm going to click OK uh, and stick with this version that we have. And now if we take a look, both the top of our leaf and the bottom uh, have the same image map. So let's go ahead and just take a look at a render and see how that looks. And we can see that image map 
uh, the colors showing up on both sides uh, exactly the same. Well, a big problem is leaves uh, don't look the same on both sides. They always look a little different. Uh, so what we can do is actually set up uh, a material for these leaves so that the bottom side of the leaf is different from the top. And this can be done for both trees and plants uh, in the same method. So let's go ahead and open up our material for this. And I'm going to select Mixed Material. I'm going to right mouse click on Material 1, select Copy, and right mouse click on Material 2 and Paste. And now we can open up Material 2, which I'm going to call Custom Leaf 2. And now this image that we have, edit our function, uh, we can go ahead and load in the other color and bump. So I'll first select our color, double click, and we're going to load in the back. And now I'm going to select the bump map and load in the back bump map. And now this is set up, uh, if we take a look at our different images, these are matched up perfectly to our clip map um, both ways. So we have, this is a scanned leaf, we've scanned both sides, and then flipped our back color, uh, and flipped that horizontally, so that it matches up exactly to our clip map. Uh, and both sides are completely matched up. And that's just one thing you need to make sure uh, you're doing for these double-sided leaves, is make sure that they are matched up and that you're using the same clip map. So now that that's set up, uh, what we can do is go to our custom leaf main material, and I'm going to turn on distribution of materials dependent on local slope, altitude, and orientation. I'm going to turn off altitude and turn up slope all the way. And now if we click OK, and OK again, uh, we're actually going to see the backside uh, material on top. Uh, so what we need to do is double click on the material and just swap material one and two. And we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer so we can see both the tops and bottom of the leaf. And let's go ahead and render that. And now what we can see is that our top leaves are that first color map we have loaded in. And on the bottom, we have that new color map, which is the underside of our leaf. Uh, so we have the ability to uh, create these double-sided leaves with a very easy method, uh, just creating a mixed material and adjusting that one setting. Uh, very, very easy. Uh, most time you'll spend matching up uh, your color maps. Uh, but if you use the templates uh, that we've created in the tutorial, uh, you'll find it much easier to create those variations. Uh, and mainly with the undersides of the leaves, you want to make sure that uh, they're a little bit of a different color, and also that you can usually see the stem uh, and the veins that are showing up a little bit better. Uh, so those are just the, the main adjustments you want to make uh, when creating the undersides of your leaves, whether it's for a plant or for a tree. And in this case, we're just using uh, image maps from actual leaves uh, to create this plant. I'm going to go ahead and double click to open up the plant editor and just create another variation. Uh, and what you're seeing at this point is that we've lost our image map showing up. A little bit of an OpenGL display error. Uh, but that's okay. Everything is still fine for our image. Uh, it's just because we're using a mixed material and it's not just one material anymore. Uh, so that can sometimes happen. Uh, and you also see a little bit of pixelation on the edges of these just because this isn't a very large um, quality image. Uh, it's a little smaller of a pixel resolution uh, because this is one of the 33% sized uh, versions from the leaf collection. So uh, it's 33% of the size of the main image. And if we need to, we can increase our bump map on both of these. Let's go ahead and increase that to 0 0.3. Actually, we'll do 0.5. And we'll just do that for both of them to create a really nice amount of depth on both sides of these leaves. And it looks really good. Uh, so this is a, an excellent way to create uh, much more realistic looking plants. Uh, is to be able to enable this 
uh, double-sided material, uh, which, as you saw, is extremely quick and easy. Uh, and it all really depends on the image maps that you're using. Uh, another thing we can do with this type of flexibility uh, is adjust uh, what is called the backlight. And it is a option that is only available uh, to plants. And it has to do with creating the illusion of light shining through the plant. So if we go over to our material, and I'm going to select material 1, go to effects, and on the bottom we have backlight. And right now it's set to 100%. Well, when we're underneath, uh, we might want a little more light shining through, uh, as opposed to looking at it from the top. So this way we can adjust the undersides of the leaves to absorb more light and uh, shine more through uh, than we have on the tops of our leaves. Uh, so let's go ahead and change that to uh, 150, uh, which is going to make it a lot brighter, uh, but the tops of our leaves will stay uh, the same brightness. Uh, so that's another uh, really cool way we can increase the realism. And I'm going to create a, a little bit of a better render of this, and we can take a look. And it looks really, really good. We have a very nice, uh, realistic looking plant, two-sided leaves. Uh, and another really nice thing about uh, this technique is with some plants, or mainly trees, you'll end up with uh, your image polygons uh, that are used to create the leaves flipping over. And sometimes you have uh, variations where the, what's normally the top of the surface is actually on the bottom. Uh, but the nice thing about this technique is no matter how the polygons are oriented, uh, the bottom of that polygon will always show up uh, with whatever you have set for the underside of the material. Uh, what we can also do is if at any time you want to swap those, you can just hit the swap button, and now we have the exact opposite, where we're going to have our backside now on the front, and we can just see that top side image uh, just a little bit on the bottom now. Uh, so there's a lot we can do with this and we can apply this to other plants as well. Uh, I'm going to open this back up, swap those out, uh, so it's back to the real species and now we can load in uh, a lot of different of the other plants available. We could do uh, the palm, uh, the tropic, and let's go ahead and do the Aurelia. Uh, just so we can move this over and see it on a different species. Uh, we'll select our first plant and copy its leaf material. And go to our new plant and paste our leaf. And open that up. We'll go ahead and increase our length and decrease our width to match up with the shape of our image. We can adjust the fall off and the length of our stems, the flexibility amount, whether or not we'd like to curl these leaves, and create a couple of different versions to choose from. And now we can see where the light is really shining through. Uh, that backlight option shows up quite a bit. So if you need to tone that down, you can. You can always open up the Material Summary, select that leaf, and under Material 1, let's go ahead and bring that backlight down to 125. So it's a little bit higher, uh, but not as high as it was. Go ahead and take a look at Render. And now we can see it on our other species. So this is a really, really cool technique. Uh, it's extremely useful for working with plants uh, and also trees. Uh, so we can take a look now at modifying a tree. And uh, what we're going to use is our Photoshop template file to begin with. And uh, we are going to create a different version of the leaf uh, to look more like the underside of a leaf. 
And then we can go ahead and create a new set uh, of images and uh, create that underside. And I now have uh, open in Photoshop uh, that leaf we were working on earlier uh, and the one we had saved out uh, to create our uh, custom leaf shape for our template file. So now what we want to do is modify this to make it look a lot more like the underside of a leaf. And one easy way uh, in this case to change it around a bit is to go to our vein layer and I am going to uh, first create a copy of it and then I am going to turn off that original version and I'm going to invert the copy go to our opacity and we can adjust that value turning it down a little uh, we can also go to control L which is going to adjust our levels and now we can move some of this around and we can see with some of those sections it might be a little too intense uh, but we'll increase uh, the white area or decrease the amount of depth we have there and now we can see the difference and to be honest I think that the inverted version actually looks a little bit more like the top of the leaf uh, so you could actually use this for the top and edit the other one uh, if you wanted. Uh, but I'm currently going to stick with this version. I'm also going to uh, take a look at this again and copy and paste it over and then close that out or hide that previous layer and now we have a new copy. I'm going to open up levels and I'm going to adjust this a little bit more. Uh, to give us another blending version uh, that we can work with. And if we go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, uh, we can go ahead and increase the contrast or decrease it. Something a little bit lighter. And now we have these two different images and I can go through the blending modes uh, in order to enhance uh, some of these areas. And we can see that looks a little bit better. It uh, looks more like the underside now. Uh, but the coloration might not be right. So you just kind of want to go through until you find uh, something that looks uh, best with this type of an image. And it might not always be the same blending style depending on the colors you're working with. Uh, so what you may need to do is change that background color or do another color overlay uh, in order to get it to look uh, correct. Uh, but we'll go ahead and use this. And now this looks a little bit better. Uh, I also want to add, uh, we could add another object and maybe some more shapes to define the stem a little bit more because underneath we're going to see that stem showing up uh, a little better. So you could use the paintbrush. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new group and call this stem. And click OK. And if you remember, uh, we also created those stems uh, for our template file that we could use. Uh, and if you want the most realism, uh, then you're going to want to render this without the stem uh, and then take a look at those stems we had loaded in earlier uh, so that you can match them up uh, and connect them. Uh, but if you're not really going to worry about that too much, uh, what we can do is just use the rectangle tool and just draw out a shape in the center. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize that. V on the keyboard for move and I'll double click to open up our layer style. Uh, we're going to set up a color overlay and I'm just going to select uh, one of the lightest colors that I can find on the canvas and then make it a little bit lighter. And now I can go to our inner shadow, change our distance all the way down to zero 
and we can adjust the size and the opacity amount uh, to create a bit of a stem. And now we have that stem going through the center, and it looks more like the underside of a leaf. You can uh, go more in depth if you want and add some of those to the side, uh, but I think this will be sufficient and should look uh, pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this out, and we don't need to worry about the clip map. Um, just saving out the color will be more than enough because this is the same shape we were using earlier. And now, back in view, I have that template scene we had created earlier opened. And I'm going to select our leaf group, double click. And if you remember, we created that variation, so we will need to modify the color maps on both the materials. I'm going to edit our first material, edit its function, and load in the color map that we just created for the underside. And we don't need to change anything else. Click OK. Edit Material 2. Edit the function. And load in that new color map. And now we have uh, an image that we can use uh, for the underside. And to make this as realistic as possible, uh, what I'm going to do is go through all of our leaves and anything we have overlapping uh, I am going to switch which, which one is on top and which is on bottom and that will create uh, a lot more realism in the scene. Uh, first I'm going to just ungroup all these objects uh, so we can individually select our leaves. And now if we take a look at this leaf we can see that it is currently underneath the other one. We're going to go to the numerics, and I'm going to adjust the Z position until it's now above it. And we'll move over here to our leaf, and we're going to adjust that one. We're going to come over here on this side and move this one so it's above. And if we can tell this one is going over a branch a little, so we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to go ahead and move that down. And if we need to move down that color in the background uh, to give us more room underneath the branches, we can do that. Uh, let's go ahead and move this one down, where we have a little bit of an overlap. And now it looks like everything that we had uh, overlapping has now been switched. Uh, so that's going to create a much more realistic looking effect. And what we can do is render out our color of this one. And we can go ahead and create our next template file and load this in uh, to create our other maps. So go ahead and click Render. And we can create our color map. And actually, I'm going to escape uh, because we do want to turn on that background because we're not even going to have to worry about the clip uh, in this case. So we'll just let that render and we're going to save it out and then I'm going to load up our next uh, template. And now I have our group loaded in and I'm going to select our group, open up the material, edit our function, and load in uh, that new render and our undersided color. Click OK and OK again and now we have uh, an image map we can use for the underside. Now if we also take a look uh, within this group uh, we have some branches uh, with leaves overlapping the other ones. Uh, so what we can do is switch these polygons or these planes as well uh, moving them up and down, and I'm going to go ahead and ungroup these and select first our lower right, go to our numerics, and I'm going to move that up. 
that is now above both of our leaves. I'm going to go ahead over to the right, or our top left one actually, and we can move that above, so our branches are going above, and also our connector, we'll move that above the others as well. Uh, now sometimes with this much uh, blending, uh, it's going to be difficult to tell which ones are overlapping in which place. Uh, so what you can do is really take a look at it, maybe open up the image, uh, and kind of switch back and forth taking a look. Uh, if you have multiple monitors, you can throw that image up on another monitor and really figure out which leaves are overlapping and which ones aren't and adjust uh, that image accordingly. So that way uh, the branches will show up correctly and it will really look a lot more realistic. So I'm going to go ahead and just render this. Bring back our background. And we can render out this color map. And then I'm going to load up a plant. And we're going to apply both of these materials to it so that we have our underside and our top side leaves on the same material. And we are now going to load in our maple tree. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and change our flexibility to 200 to make those leaves curl down a little bit more. Actually, we'll go ahead and do 150 uh, so it's not so drastic. And then I'm going to select our material for our leaf, edit the function, uh, make sure we're deleting our bump, and I'm going to load in uh, first our top, so our branch group color that we'd created before, and also our clipping map for that, and we're going to invert the layer and just connect our bump uh, to the color for now. Click OK. And now what we can do is set up our mixed material. Uh, actually, first I'm going to go back to the simple material, uh, open up the plant editor, and change our hooking point. And click OK. Because once we change this to a mixed material, it's going to be difficult to change that option. Let's so go back and change that to mixed material. I'm going to copy our material 1 and paste it into material 2. And now remember material 1 is actually uh, the underside or is going to end up being the underside of the leaf. So we're going to go ahead and select that. First I'm going to change our layer names uh, so that we can find out exactly which one is which. And we'll select material 1 edit our function, and now load in our underside we just created. We can click OK. And also the underside of a leaf is typically uh, not as shiny um, or really doesn't have as high of a specular value. So I'm going to turn down the highlight and make it a little bit duller. And we can click OK. I'm going to turn on our influence of environment, turn on the distribution of materials dependent on local slope, altitude, and orientation, turn off altitude, and increase slope to 100%. And now what we're going to have is our double-sided leaves on our tree. Go ahead and zoom in just a bit. Uh, we can also go to that material which is going to be the underside, and go to our effects and increase the backlight uh, just a little bit to make light shine through it a little bit more. And now I'm going to go ahead and render this, and we can take a look. And what we can see is that when we're taking a look at the undersides of leaves, uh, we can really see that stem uh, showing up on those specific leaves. And then on the leaves where we're looking at it from the top, we don't see the stem showing up uh, nearly as much. Uh, it might be a little too drastic with this high of a bump map. 
So you might want to edit that or create a custom bump map. Uh, but this will create much more realistic looking tree overall. Uh, just having both of those sides. I'm going to go ahead, increase our flexibility to 200. And we'll really bring that down. And I'm just going to change this to global illumination. And render out another version. And overall, that looks like a really nice looking tree. Uh, the leaves look a lot better. Sometimes, uh, in this case, where we have so many leaves, uh, maybe having the underside might not be uh, something that's all that noticeable. Uh, but if you ever get really close to the tree and you have it animated, you're really moving around it, uh, looking at it from underneath, changing views, uh, then the realism in the scene uh, really come out a little bit more because uh, sometimes you're just really able to notice uh, the small little details. Uh, sometimes even if you're not looking for them, they kind of pop out like that leaf is overlapping on this side and it's also overlapping on the other side as well. Uh, so little things like that, uh, this will correct and can sometimes be really helpful uh, for creating that illusion uh, overall of depth. And I would recommend saving out the material that you, uh, we just created uh, so that you can load it in whenever you need a double-sided leaf. And then all you have to do is just swap out those uh, image maps. And you get something that looks a little bit nicer.